Good morning, everybody. Uh, Data Pioneer here with the Linux Unix Tech Channel, and it is November the 8th, 2021, uh, a Monday. Hope everybody's doing fine out there and uh, surviving the pandemic. Um, coming back after a, quite a bit of a hiatus here, I've uh, been doing some uh, other things, working on some other projects, and uh, finally decided to get back into it and uh, take a look at a distro of Linux that I have not seen before. Um, it really had it's kind of uh, escaped my radar here. Uh, it's called Solus, Solus Linux, and um, I'm up on distrowatch.com right now taking a look at it, and I've already got installed in a, a virtual machine. I'll talk about that in a moment, but uh, let's take a look at Solus. Um, Solus is, of course, a Linux distro. It's based on independent, which means that it's not based uh, primarily on or directly from either Debian, Ubuntu, or Arch, or one of the other distros. Um, it is an independent, built-from-scratch distribution. Its origin is from Ireland, and it is an x86-64 architecture, so it does come in the 64-bit version, of course. Um, it has a special desktop um, designed for this package and itself, and it's called Budgie, and it is uh, GNOME-based. Um, but I'm going to be running the KDE Plasma version. Uh, it does come in GNOME, uh, GNOME, and the KDE Plasma, and it does come in Mate as well. But I'm going to take a look at the KDE Plasma version, which is what I have installed from the download, um, and I'll show you the website here in a moment. Um, it's an active distribution, and it is popularity right now on uh, DistroWatch is 15, with about 594 hits per day, so not bad. Let me read the blurb here in uh, on the website at, uh, distri at DistroWatch. It says, Solus is a Linux distribution built from scratch, and it uses a forked version of the PySci package manager maintained as EOPKG within Solus and a custom desktop environment called Budgie developed in-house. Uh, the Budgie de desktop, uh, which can be set to emulate the look and feel of the GNOME 2 desktop, is tightly integrated with the GNOME stack. The distribution is available for 64-bit computers only, so this is not available in the 32-bit version. Uh, so if you have older hardware that uh, only has the 32-bit processor, uh, you're not going to be able to run it. So I'm, I've got it fired up in a virtual machine, and uh, let's go out to the website for the homepage at getsol.us, and here it is. Um, pretty nice website, and uh, talks a little bit about uh, Solus and uh, what it's available for, what it can do, uh, and what it ships with, for instance, Mozilla Firefox. Got your typical player here, uh, Rhythmbox, and uh, it comes with the Thunderbird as well. Um, however, let's take a look at the download links. And so if I come up here, there's a blog, there's a forum, there's a help center. Um, you can get involved with Solace, obviously. And uh, if you click on the About link, it'll take you out to more information about Solace. So let's look at the download, and here it is. Um, so you do have the Solace Budgie. Uh, the download here is uh, the Budgie version. You've got the Solace Gnome. You have the Solace Mate and the Solace Plasma. So the KDE Plasma is what I'm going to be um, premiering here today for you and taking a look at. Let's look at the system requirements. The uh, system requirements uh, show a D blank DVD or 2 plus gigabyte USB drive. I used a 32 gigabyte USB drive, uh, used USB imager to image this onto a stick and uh, installed it on bare metal as well. And it works really well on my old laptop that is a 64 bit processor, uh, but it runs really well. Uh, minimum uh, requirements here are 10 gigs of disk space being available, 4 gigs of RAM, and I'm going to be testing this out on 6 gigs of RAM today on the uh, virtual machine. Uh, but to get the optimal experience, you'll need at least 4 gigs. 2 gigs won't quite make it. 
uh, be a little slow for you. 64-bit uh, processor, x86-64. Uh, and there is a donate to your uh, to our collective here. So if you want to buy them a cup of coffee or donate to the website, um, to the project uh, for Solace, to the developers, that would be good. I'm sure they would appreciate it. All right, so let's uh, let's go out to uh, VirtualBox, and uh, I have it uh, already fired up here. Uh, it's in six gigs of uh, RAM. I think I gave it uh, 50 gigs of hard drive space, if I'm not mistaken. And so let's go ahead and log in. I'm not going to show you the install uh, of this because it's a pretty plain Jane um, installer. I think it uses the uh, Calamares installer, as a matter of fact. Everybody knows how to install a distro in VirtualBox or in a virtual machine, so I'm not going to go through that. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get this uh, fired up. So let me put in the password. And here we go. So uh, we'll bring up the desktop here and take a look at it. And here it is. All right, so I've got a wired connection already. I'm connected wired. I've got a bridge connection for my network adapter. And uh, so let's take a look at what's available here on the bottom. I've got some updates available here, so I'm going to go ahead and close that for now. All right, so you've got the start menu, application menu, uh, and the menu that you have is the typical menu, uh, which I'm not quite sure what it's calling it. Let me right-click and... Uh, Let's do a show alternatives, and I guess it's calling it just the application menu, but you do have the application launcher, and you do have the application dashboard. Um, but the application menu that we're looking at right now is this simply called application menu. So let's go ahead and click on that. So here are your selections, and I'll get into that in a moment. All right, but if you were to uh, right-click and show alternatives, and let's go up to the application launcher and switch. Uh, and you can see we'd have another type of launcher. I actually prefer this one over the first one because it expands out um, the options that you have available here on the left. And you have a search window clearly visible at the top. Uh, and then you've down at the bottom, you have your applications that you can click on, your places. You've got in various modes here, sleep, hibernate, Restart and shut down. All right, and let's take a look at the next one, um, which is the application dashboard. And I'm sure everybody's familiar with that as well. And if you click on that, you get the dashboard itself. And you can just start typing here uh, to see if anything is available. And HTOP is not, so we'd have to install that. But you've got uh, recent applications and um, all applications, your development, your graphics, etc., etc. All right, so let's go back to the original show alternatives and application menu switch and uh, take okay, so there we have it. All right, so let's go across. You've got your software centers. So if I click on that button there, and this is kind of neat because uh, Solus offers up a software center which is a little bit different than the typical software center you know, that you might see in other distros of Linux like Varen or MX uh, or Ubuntu. And uh, has it categorized a little bit differently. Uh, for instance, you've got your desktop software and theming. You've got your gaming on Solus. You've got multimedia and graphics. You've got internet software, uh, office software, programming languages and tools, security software, and system software. So let's take a look at desktop software and theming. And so here you've got the KDE desktop, you've got the GNOME documentation tools, etc., etc., the Budgie desktop. Uh, so you've got different, uh, you know, uh, themes that you can imply, apply here. Uh, so let's go back um, and click it again. Okay, let's go back. All right, and so multimedia and graphics. What's available there, you've got a graphics category, you've got an audio software category, video, general multimedia software, streaming, multimedia codecs, and multimedia libraries. Under graphics here, you've got a whole plethora of, of things. Darktable, you've got, uh, you know, uh, Eye of Gnome, Flameshot, which I 
I like. Uh, if you haven't tried Flameshot, that's a screenshot capturing uh, utility, and it's it's great. All right, does the job and gets out of your way. All right, so let's go back, go back one more, and let's take a look at uh, gaming on Solus. You've got arcade games, you've got puzzle games. If you're a gamer, uh, this is your distribution here. Strategy games, uh, card games, action games, platformer uh, games, role-playing, uh, main games collection, massive multiplayer games. I'm not a gamer, so I'm not really interested in, in a lot of this. But if you are, uh, obviously, you know, you've got all day long you can get in here and pull up games and, and play to your heart's content. All right, so let's go back out and uh, let's take a look at uh, multimedia, well, let's see, Internet software, networking utilities, uh, networking base, news and RSS readers, instant messaging, remote management software, web applications, You've got IRC clients, email clients, web browsers. This is what I, I like about Solus. Uh, I use the Brave web browser uh, predominantly in any distro of Linux that I run. And um, Brave is available, so I could install Brave directly from here. I don't have to go out to the Brave website and download that. Um, I do have Brave installed, uh, but I am on the, the out-of-the-box experience here in Solus right now and I'll pull up the other one later and show you how I've got it set up but you've got Firefox, Falcon, you've got Lynx, you've got Opera, uh, you've got Vivaldi, so you've got all of them here okay you even have the W3M browser as well alright so let's see for email clients let's see what they have available one of the interesting things I noticed was it does have Alpine, it has Claws Mail, Evolution Mail for those uh, die-hard, uh, uh, old guard uh, mail users uh, in Linux. And you've got uh, K-Mail, MailSpring. I use MailSpring. I've got a professional account in MailSpring. I really love it because I can pull in all of my accounts into one interface, and uh, it's a modern-looking, sleek uh, design, uh, unlike uh, you know Thunderbird, which is okay, but uh, MailSpring, I believe, tops it. Um, and then you've got uh, Proton Mail Bridge as well. So I've got a Proton Mail account, and so I have the Proton Mail Bridge installed in Farron OS. And uh, so here it is in Solus as well. So that's that's great news. Um, you've got uh, download managers. So you've got uh, Deluge. You've got uh, OwnCloud, uh, Qubit Torrent. Uh, there is also uh, SyncThing. If you've not used SyncThing, it's a great little uh, application for syncing your uh, various, uh, you know, uh, online uh, storage and uh, local storage. Okay, and let's go back out. Let's go back out again. Let's go to Office Software, and you can see that uh, for the Office Software, it's probably LibreOffice, if I have to guess. And... Uh, Although I don't see, maybe it's a further on down. Um, LibreOffice, I'm sure, is available here. And uh, yeah, here we go. So LibreOffice is available. I believe that's the default installation office package or suite here in Solus. We'll take a look at that in a moment. But you've got a whole uh, host of others that you can choose from, uh, including uh, Scribus, and uh, you've got. Uh, Let's see, we've got simple scan for your scanner. All right. And let's see what text editors are available. Emacs, Genie, uh, Ghost Rider. Um, let's see here. Got uh, LeafPad. I use LeafPad all the time. If you haven't tried LeafPad, give it a try. Uh, you'll thank me later. Um, and we have, let's see, Text Studio and TextWorks. All right. So let's go back, and uh, we've got financial software, we've got scientific software, mathematics-oriented software. Let's see what we have available there. Uh, Maximo? Oh, Maximo's there. Wow. I did not realize that Maximo was there, so that's good. Okay, so let's go back and back again, and now let's take a look at 
security software. So we've got cryptographic utilities, security applications, security-oriented libraries. Uh, if we go back, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got system software here, kernel drivers, boot utilities, base development tools, system utilities, system base, uh, a whole host of things down through here, kernel images, uh, various uh, versions, database, clients, and servers. Let's take a look at that. MariaDB, uh, DBeaver. I use DBeaver all the time. Uh, it's a universal database manager in for SQL-based or RD, BMS uh, databases. I'm uh, working with Neo4j right now, which is a graph database. Uh, so I'm not that interested in uh, RDBMS anymore. All right, and so it looks like that's the whole slew that we have. And then we just touched the surface in there. I didn't go through every one of them. Let's close that. All right, and so now with the software center out of the way, let's take we've got Dolphin File Manager. And uh, Dolphin is a great uh, file manager if you haven't used it. Um, I think everybody probably has use Dolphin at one point or another. Uh, I use PC Man FM, also use files. Uh, I prefer PC Man FM, but I will use Dolphin. I even use Thunar from time to time, so, uh, but Dolphin is a great one for GNOME-based systems uh, for desktop environment. All right, so uh, I do have some uh, SMB CIFS shares out on my uh, personal cloud that I've developed in uh, Portainer and um, Open Media Vault. So let's click on Network and see if they're there. And here it is, Shared Folders, SMB. And so let me click on that and see if it brings it up here. Yeah, here we go. Raspberry Pi, SMB, CIFS. Let's click on that. And uh, sure enough, here's my Linux store. And so if I click on that, it does require me to log in. And click OK, and there we go. All right, so if I bring that up to full screen, uh, here we are. So I've got my access to my uh, Open Media Vault uh, SMB CIFS share called Linux Store. And uh, this gets backed up every night at 4 a.m. And uh, I believe I have a ton of stuff on it. All right, and so that's great. So that means that the Solus is good for accessing your uh, network-based uh, uh, storage, okay, uh, for your NAS, network-attached storage. Okay, so let's see. We've got uh, Firefox web browser, so let's go ahead and open that up to see what version we have by default. I don't have Brave installed here yet, uh, but if, uh, if I open this up to full screen, and then let's go up to uh, Help. And about Firefox, we're running 89.0.2, 64-bit, which is a fairly recent version. I think the latest version is 93, however, so this is 89. Uh, so it is a lagging a little bit behind, but uh, uh, this is the latest version of Solus that I installed, I downloaded from uh, the web. And so... Uh, they do have some, this isn't really outdated, but it's just not the latest and greatest cutting edge. But then Solus is not a rolling release distro either. And so you're going to be, uh, this is stable. So you're going to get stable versions of uh, applications. All right, so let's go ahead and close that. And uh, let's see if I can get out to my website. All right, and... Uh, See if we can pull up the greatest website in the world here, which is Data Pioneer Network. We call it DP Network. It's self-hosted. Uh, I do not use a uh, company to do this. Click OK. And so here we are. And, uh, and so this is my DP Network uh, website. And it's got uh, 200, well, several hundred uh, articles in my blog right now. And so uh, if I click on blog, i show you my latest article I just completed. And then we'll get back to the uh, distribution here. It's called HTOP Human Readable Top Processes Monitoring in Linux. Okay, So this is uh, Firefox web browser pulling up my website just fine. Let me go ahead and close that.
close the tabs. All right, so we're back to the uh, home page now. I mean the home page, the uh, help desktop. Um, what I like about this, too, is you'll notice there's some transparency going on here in the uh, panel, okay, at the bottom, which, by the way, if you right-click and configure icons only or edit the panel, you can bring this up. You can uh, reduce the uh, size here or increase the size. If I reduce it down, it makes that smaller. And if I bring it up, it makes it larger, okay? And um, you got more options as well. You can add widgets. So for instance, if I wanted to add a clock, which I usually do, my analog clock, I can bring that out and uh, bring that up to there. And let me make that a little bit smaller. Uh, so let's bring that down. Let's see if I can make that smaller here. Well, having a little trouble making that smaller. That's okay. Um, to play with it a little bit. And if I do configuration, I can also show the second hand. So we've got now a second hand, sweep second hand here. And so I've got a clock out on the desktop. I have my analog clock, which is, is great. And I usually bring up a, a weather app as well. So if I do weather and I'll bring that down here to the taskbar. And let's close the uh, widgets out now. And let me click on that. And uh, let's do configure weather report. And let's see here. If I do uh, weather station appearance, units, keyboard, um, choose. I'm going to choose the NOAA's National Weather Service. I'm going to enter a location, which is my hometown, Asheville, North Carolina. And that is NOAA. And select it. Let's uh, update every 30 minutes is fine. Let's click OK and apply and OK. And so now if I click that, there's my weather. So I've got weather for my local area here at Asheville, uh, which is on the western North Carolina, uh, on the east coast, in the New York time zone. And so it shows the weather for the uh, today's date, which is the 8th of November, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th. Okay, so uh, very nice, very nice. All right, and so let's take a look at what we have here. We've got, uh, we've already looked at a lot of these uh, in the software center, but out of the box, you've got uh, your development, which is user feedback console, graphics, GwenView, LibreOffice Draw, so the LibreOffice suite is the default, Ocular, which is the PDF viewer, Internet, we have Firefox, KDE Connect, KDE Connect SMS, Conversation, we've got uh, Open on Connected Device with KDE Connect, and Thunderbird. For Multimedia, we've got Elisa, never used Elisa, MPV Media Player, SMP Player, or SM Player. Uh, Office, we've got the full Office Suite, including Ocular here. We've got for Settings, Hardware Drivers, iBus preferences, print settings, and let's take a look and see if it picked up my printer. It should have. I've got an HP uh, printer, and it did. HP Desktop 2600 series, so it found my printer just fine. All right, and so let's go back. And uh, Software Center, we've got uh, System Settings. All right, and then for under System, we have Dolphin. Info Center. So if I go to the Info Center, take a look at this. Let's see what information it pops up for us. It says Solus version 4.3 is what we're running. And I'm running the KDE Plasma version 5.22.2 uh, desktop environment uh, with a Frameworks version 5.83.0. I've got a Qt version 5.15.3 and I've got a kernel version 5.13.1-187 current, 64-bit. So that's a pretty uh, recent version of the kernel. Uh, for graphics platform, I've got X11 is what I'm using right now. I'm not using, uh, uh, you know, the the uh, latest version of the uh, uh, graphics. But uh, X11 is, is what I usually go with and prefer. All right, and so uh, processor, we've got... Uh, this is the stuff that with the video with uh, 
VirtualBox. So I'm not going to go through all of that. So let's go ahead and close that. And let's come back out to, I believe we were on Utilities. We've got Arc, Arc for Archiver, Emoji Selector. We've got Kate. It's the text editor. KCal Calculator. Uh, K Character Select and Spectacle, which is a, uh, I believe Spectacle is another screenshot capturing uh, utility. And then for power sessions, you've got, you can lock the desktop, you can log out, switch user, sleep, hibernate, restart, or shut down. If we come across uh, here, we've got uh, Get Plasma Browser Integration. Uh, we've got the audio muted, so let me go ahead and unmute that right now. And uh, could test that out if I want to. Um, most recent device here, we've got uh, networks. I'm on a uh, wired connection, so I'm not going to bring that up. And then I've got uh, minimize all windows. Over here, we've got our typical calendar uh, out of the box. We've got November. This is November 8th, which is a Monday. And uh, of course, we can move into you know subsequent months. And go back to November, okay. And um, and then we've got the time here, 9.37 a.m., which is replicated here in my analog clock out on the desktop. Okay, I like to have the analog clock. Not quite so large. I just need to make that smaller. And I'm for some reason, I've had trouble getting that to reduce. Uh, there we go. Okay, so just had to give it time. All right, so that's more of the size that I like or prefer to have. All right, so if I go up into, uh, let's do this. Console should be the terminal, and it is because we're running KDE Plasma. And, uh, of course, I don't want to keep that. So let's do settings. Uh, let's uh, configure console. And I want to uh, add a profile. Let's add a new profile here, call it Data Pioneer. We'll use the bin bash command here and uh, initial directory home Data Pioneer. Uh, 110 columns, let's bump that up to 120. Uh, rows, let's bump that up to 40 because I'm running a, 10, uh, a 1920 by 1080 um, screen here. Okay, 40. Uh, for Parents, let's come down there. Let's run this uh, in a solarized uh, theme. And for font, let's go here and click um, choose. And let's bump that up to oh, 15, will be okay, I guess. Let's click OK. Let's click Apply and OK. Um, let's click Data Pioneer and set as default. And let's close it. And then let's reopen console. This time when I bring it up, I'll add it to favorites. Right, so I can right click here and add to favorites. So it'll be up on my favorites list now. And so let's bring it up. And I need to bring it full screen and there we go. All right, so we're at, uh, and if I close it now and then bring it up one more time, it should be uh, full screen, I believe. Yeah, all right, so good to go. All right, so this is the Solus, and Solus uses the EO package uh, management system, uh, which is uh, PySci management. And, uh, and so rather than Aptitude or DNF or Pac-Man, you're going to use EO package. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, and the first thing I would normally do is uh, update the system. And with Solus, you don't use... A similar command like you do in uh, Ubuntu, you do not do sudo um, apt update, or in this case, sudo uh, eo package update. Uh, if you do that, you'll error out. There'll be an error uh, presented on the screen uh, as a standard error. You know, what you want to do is use the upgrade command. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and run it, and it's probably going to take a while, and I'll come back after it's completed. So let's do a sudo. EOPKG upgrade to upgrade the uh, packages on this system. All right, and password. And here we go. So it's uh, updating the repositories. 
and it should go out and see if there are any available updates. There should be several. Uh, and um, so we'll check that out. Oh, yeah, plenty. All right, do you want to go ahead and do this? Yes, I do. All right, and so it's going to do its thing here, updating the packages in Solus. And this is going to take a while, so I'm going to let this run, and I'll be back. Okay, it's completed. Um, it took about 10 minutes to uh, update 385 packages uh, for Solus, and that's pretty typical for distributions um, to take that long, especially with that many packages. So not not bad, and I have a fairly fast system, so um, performance-wise, I think Solus is doing really well uh, in the update category here. Anyway, so let's clear the screen, clean up the terminal. Let me do uh, an install of HTOP and then I'll restart the system and we'll take a look and see how uh, light or heavy it is uh, for memory usage and so let's do a sudo uh, install eopkg install htop and put in my password and htop is installed and so let's do clear the screen and let's let's do a reboot. We re reboot the system, and then when it comes up, we'll get in and uh, run HTOP right away. See what we have as far as memory usage goes. Now, I'm expecting it to be a little heavier because it's a KDE Plasma desktop environment. All right, let me go and log in. And um, take a look at this. comes up fairly fast. I like it. It's very responsive. And so let's go in um, let's do get into the terminal and let's run HTOP. And here we go. Uh, so right now um, for HTOP it's not really telling me let's see memory. I can't read the numbers over here. Um, interesting. And that's probably because I have the solarized um, uh, set up. But let's let's do this. Get out of it, and let's do free, and take a look at it that way. So here, memory-wise, we've got a total of uh, 6085892. We've used 589,752. So we've got 490 or 4 4.998636. Uh, kilobytes free. All right, so uh, we're not using any swap. So we've only used like about 589 uh, megabytes out of five, out of six gigs. Okay, so that's that's not bad for uh, Solus uh, running a KDE Plasma desktop. Not bad at all. Let's take a look at the structure here of the uh, disk free. And uh, it looks like I've got 18% of the uh, um, available hard drive space. Of, looks like I've got uh, 46 gigs. I gave it 50, so it's being used. Some of it's being used, of course, with the operating system. 7.7 .7 gigs uh, with 36 gigs available. So 18% utilized. Uh, it does have... Um, Dev temp FS and uh, temp FS as well. All right, and so let's run a uname dash a and um, take a look at that. So it's Linux Solus VM 5.14.16 dash 204 current. So it did up upgrade the kernel as well uh, during the upgrade process. So that's very good. Okay, so let's. Uh, exit out of that and uh, all right so this is um, Solus Linux an independent distro of Linux from Ireland this has been a uh, product review uh, not so much a setup but a system product review of Solus OS and uh, this has been Data Pioneer have a great day take care bye bye